And hang on. We are live with Lunch Break Live. Take it away, Letha. All yours. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Lunch Break Live. This is going to be the most fabulous bistro rice dish okay and even though i keep saying bistro rice throughout the show honestly all of the ingredients is what makes it the main dish right we want to present a beautiful dish to our guests to our family whoever it is and we want them to feel so special and in order to make them feel special you put love into your acts of service and this dish is full of love and it is an act of service. Anytime you're cooking for someone, you are definitely showing your love. So the first thing we are going to start with is lovely cauliflower. We are making something called cauliflower steaks. And in order to start off here, we just take off all of this right here, okay? And then we're left with the cauliflower head, okay? and. It's beautiful. This one is small. It's purple. I love purple and deep colored food because it is antioxidant rich. So we're going to go ahead and cut our cauliflower. The corners are always going to just fall to pieces, but the thick of it, the middle of the cauliflower is exactly what turns into the cauliflower steak. And here we go. We have a cauliflower steak. So this is about an inch thick. Okay. And then you're going to go ahead and place it on a roasting sheet okay so let's go ahead and get that place it there we're going to cut another one and i like to do different colors of cauliflower okay i have yellow i have green and then of course the normal white and i like to just do a blend of it and it looks beautiful after presentation is all set up on your plate you have multicolored cauliflower steaks all right now, the reality is in that cauliflower, you are only going to get one, depending on how small it is, to maybe three thick cauliflower steaks. So the rest are just little pieces, and you can go ahead and roast those, and you can use those in the end to just decorate your dish anyways. So this is how we are going to season the cauliflower. Let's move right on to that. We have our cauliflower steaks right here, and we are going to use some type of oil. I'm going to use avocado oil. You can use olive oil. In fact, I would probably use olive oil over avocado oil, but this is what I had today, but they both taste just as delicious. So we're gonna go ahead and rub the oil into the cauliflower steaks, flip it over, be gentle so that your cauliflower steaks do not fall apart, because they will if you're crazy about it. All right, there we go. And now it's all well seasoned. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and put some salt and pepper, typical seasoning. I have my salt and my pepper already blended together. Makes things quicker, especially when we're doing demos. Okay, we have that right in there. And I love, my secret ingredient is going to be paprika. I love paprika on my roasted veggies. And the red looks beautiful on top of the purple. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna let you look at this in just a second. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and put just a little bit of garlic, not garlic salt, garlic powder. I'm just gonna, just not very much, there we go. Now let's look at that. Oh, beautiful, love it. The reds and the purples and the whites, it's just a beautiful, colorful dish. So I'm gonna pop this into the oven and then I'm gonna pull them out a little bit later and we're going to place everything on our dish. Again, welcome to Lunch Break Live. We're so excited to have Coach Letha here. She's a South, Southern California gal and she's taking us through this incredible recipe. This is a brand new recipe. Thank you, Letha. Take it away. Awesome. Thank you. So now let's go ahead and work on the rice. Now here's the thing. With any type of wild blend rice, it takes forever. So prepare yourself for taking forever. It's just a thicker grain and that's okay. Just the amount of love you put into your food. For each food, it takes different types of times, different types of temperatures, different types of ingredients to make it taste just the way you want to. So depending on the bag, typically the bag or however you purchase your wild grain rice, it's going to tell you how long. This particular one told me one cup of rice to one and one third cup of water. It's going to be different, like I said, for each one, but it might take a little more than the normal ratio of white rice, one to one or one to two 
depending on how long you cook it, depending on all the other ingredients, depending if you use broth, depending if you use water, if you're putting frozen veggies in, everything changes it up. But don't worry, take your time, experiment. Food is meant to just, it's a big experiment, right? You just don't know what it's gonna taste like, especially when you're inventing and you're not copying recipes, okay? If you copy from other people's recipes, awesome. You're probably going to save more time that way. But when you're inventing something, you have to give yourself grace because you never know what it's going to turn out like. Okay. But always make sure and write down the ingredients. So when I'm making my rice, here's one cup of rice. Okay. I prepared the rice because we only have 30 minutes today. We're not going to have enough time for me to make the rice on the stove. So you get a pot. Okay. Put one and one third a cup of water. I might add some extra water um, depending on what I put in it. Typically in this dish, I like to just make the rice and I make enough for the week. And then I add different ingredients into my rice throughout the week so I can make different dishes, but I like to have it all ready and done. So one little uh, hack I love is better than bouillon. It is a vegan like vegetable base especially if you're in a small apartment, typically people like to buy like the big cartons of broth, vegetable broth. I like this because it's small and compact and it gives me 38 of those cartons. I mean, wow, that's amazing. And the small little container. So I've saved a lot of space. I purchased this and I use it in all of my soups and everything. But for my uh, rice, I'd like to give it more of a brothy flavor. And then of course, make it into what I want throughout the week. Okay, so you would take one teaspoon of this right here, and then your water, and then cook it and let it just cook like normal rice. You're gonna constantly have to be like fluffing it out and tasting it to see if the tenderness matches your liking. Okay, so we'll pretend I just made the rice. <laughs> and now I have, uh, let's see, right here. This is what the rice looks like, already cooked. You can rinse your rice beforehand if you like to do that. Um, sometimes if you cook your rice and you don't rinse it with this wild blend, it's going to be tinted to a darker color because of the black rice that's usually in the wild blend. So if you want your colors to pop a little more, make sure you go ahead and rinse your rice ahead of time and then go ahead and make your rice. All right. So here's my rice. Now I'm going to go ahead and cook up something. We're going to pretend because <laughs> we don't have enough time. So I'm using butternut squash. Okay, butternut squash. And I am using a green blend right here. All right, and in my green blend, I have kale, I have spinach, and I have uh, collard greens. And I like to shred them up really fine slice pieces. Yes, they are organic. And most of the time I buy from the farmer's market, support your local farmers. That is absolutely important. They need us as much as our bodies need the food that they produce. So I'm going to go ahead and cook this up. And when I cook up my uh, butternut squash and my greens, I do that on the side and then I add it into my rice. So in my greens and my butternut squash, I'm going to put two tablespoons of olive oil. Go ahead, start off with the butternut squash because anything that's denser by nature, which will be your butternut squash, is going to take longer to cook. Anything that's greens and leaves is going to take little, a little less time than your denser foods, right? Only makes sense, but sometimes we don't really think of that. So start with your dense foods first, then move on to your foods. Just imagine like energy flowing through the food, how the wind carries your food. That's the amount of energy it takes to move towards. Okay, so for example, you have a collard green or a kale. Those are pretty stiff leaves. They flow in the wind and they take a second to chew, right? If you've ever chewed those things, you know. However, if you were to use something like parsley or cilantro or even a head of lettuce, you're going to see those don't take as long to chew and they don't need as long to cook as well. Same with potatoes. Now you have potatoes and you have collard greens, okay? Potatoes are going to take a while to cook, right? And then your collard greens, you know, not as long. So now you get the concept. Awesome. Keep it in your head forever, okay? <laughs> All right. So I started off with my butternut squash. I did the oil. I put some salt. I put some pepper. I put, um, what is my favorite thing? Oh, my garlic powder, right? Never do salt, peppers, and then salt, gar garlic salt. I think that's what it's called. I think that just gets too salty. 
you want to use garlic, you infuse the flavors individually. This is one of the most important parts. People like to eat raw food, but even in raw food, vegan raw foodies, they still season their food as well. So the seasoning is very particular to each meal. Make sure you pay attention to, to that accordingly. All right. And then once I have that all cooked up, salt, pepper, um, and that's it. I actually don't use very many things for this because my rice is already well blended. Because the thing is, we're about to make a dressing to put into my little bistro rice blend. All right, so I cooked it. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. And I'm gonna give it a good mix. All right, and you don't want to mix like this with your food, right? That just destroys it. You take away the fluff. It looks kind of soggy and draggy. You want to fold. You want to fold your foods, be delicate with your food. Unless really, if it's just for you, I'd say just do what you want, get the food done and eat it if you're starving. But if you're trying to do this for presentation, which is kind of what I'm trying to hint at for this particular meal, you want to make sure you're folding and treating your food kindly. Okay, so that your food looks nice. All right, so we're all blended up right here. Now, for the rice, we are going to have to make a dressing. This is one of my most favorite dressings. Gosh, I put it on, I feel like, feels like everything. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna do equal ratios of vinegar and oil. This is a balsamic oil-based dressing. So we're gonna put equal ratios here. I'm making just for this, I'll have the recipe up. So the recipe I give you is going to be for a larger portion. I don't wanna do too much for my portion because my portion is small. So equal ratios of oil and balsamic, all right. Awesome. How are all of you doing today? I hope you're doing so amazing. I hope you feel so blessed and happy. <laughs> all right, let's give that a quick swirl. All right, okay, what else are we putting? Dijon mustard is one of those special ones you put in these dressings, okay. Not putting too much, but in the actual recipe that you'll have, you're definitely going to want to do the amount suggested. Sorry if that was loud. I'm going to go ahead and give that a little mix. I'm going to put some salt and pepper in my dressing. I wanted to mention that Elizabeth Pendergrass says, I love all the herbs and spices mentioned because it adds flavor without compromising health. Absolutely. Well Amen, sis. I love that. Thank you, Elizabeth. Now, you are Coach so Letha hard. has her own plant-based gym, you all. This is, like, unbelievably exciting. And uh, she provides cruelty-free services to all of her clientele. Now, back to you. All right, awesome. Okay, so after the Dijon, the balsamic, and the oil, we are going to put some maple syrup. All right, not very much. Everything is small portions because we don't want the dressing to be overwhelming because, remember, we put flavor and attention, great attention to detail on all the ingredients. So we don't want one thing to overpower all the things. We want all of them to blend so well together that they just complement each other and they work in unity. All right. All right, so we have maple syrup, we have salt and pepper, we have vinegar, balsamic vinegar, oil. Did I forget anything? I don't think so. All right, we're good. So my dressing. A little hard to see that there we go dressing it looks a little dark because that's the balsamic balsamic is typically pretty dark now here's the thing if you accidentally put an extra teaspoon or a tablespoon of oil or balsamic vinegar you're gonna be fine don't panic if you accidentally do something a little over you're going to be fine because you can always adjust those flavors by adding just a little extra oil if you put too much vinegar or a little extra salt and pepper if it's too bland, okay? So work with yourself. Always add more because you can't really take away. I don't know if that's good advice. <laughs> I think it's great advice. And oh you know, because you can always add more. If you put too much, then it's hard to take it out. Now, I want to tell everybody that they can find you on Facebook, the Wellness Warriors Boot Camp, and get engaged with all the amazing things that Coach Letha offers. We're so excited to uh, find you, work with you. This is great. Look at this, Yay. everybody. How tasty and delicious. Now, the question is, somebody wants to know, are you a raw vegan 
like 100% of the time. What is your lifestyle? Take it away. Yeah, just actually during the summer, I probably, I okay, I used to be a raw vegan. <laughs> I think a lot of vegans in their journey have gone through that. Like, I'm going to be all vegan and then you are raw vegan. And then you realize, huh, some cooked foods are really delicious. And, you know, the reality is science proves that there are a lot of foods. Once you cook them, their nutritional value raises up a lot. So I had to take that into account. I also don't like cold foods during the winter. It doesn't make my body happy at all. So it was all a complete learning process. However, during the summer, I 100% am all for a raw vegan diet because your body can handle those cooler temperatures. It needs the cooler temperatures to regulate its own body temperature. And you need hydrating. She's a raw Hi, Tom. <laughs> um, you need those hydrating foods to help your body stay hydrated during the summer. And a lot of the time, if you cook your food, you cook all of the water out, almost all of the water out, and you kill the enzymes. And it's really unfortunate. So even during the winter, I will still have some raw foods because I do appreciate the value of the rawness of foods and all the enzymes and the nutrients that you can only get when it is eaten raw. But during the winter, I would say I'm about 80 to 90% raw. I probably have one, one to three cooked meals during the summer. And my body just likes it better that way. Awesome question, though. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay, back to you. All right. So now I have my rice all done. Okay. And now we are going to... Do we have any other questions before I move on? Because nope, I'm going to start. We're good. Go for it. Okay, I'm going to start plating. Okay, so now I've cooked the butternut squash. I've cooked the greens. I've made my dressing for my rice. And I've blended that in. I'm trying to fold as much as possible. Um, and then my side salad, you're going to see is pretty quick. It's just the average side salad. You already put a lot of time and effort into the two things, especially the rice. So a side sal salad doesn't have to be out of this world. It can just be lettuce, uh, and any type of vegetation. I do have a rule of thumb for my salads. I like to have five vegetables in each salad. Now, if you, I'm a mother of twins, I am on the go all of the time because I have a few jobs too, okay? I'm an entrepreneur. So the reality is sometimes I have to get a bag of pre-made salad if I can't make it to the farmer's market. And not making it to the farmer's market makes me sad because I love to see my friends and socialize there as well. So it's not just about food um, and supporting the community. You get to like self recharge when you go to these places and hang out with people, your tribe, right? People that understand you. So anyways, my salad right here came from a bag because it's spring break and I want to take my kids out to have fun and I want to be attentive to them and the projects they have. And it's still a whole food. It's still salad. It's still organic. It's still great blends of different, uh, different vegetation. Thanks, Elizabeth. <laughs> um, okay. So now with this salad, I'm going to just use normal... Uh, romaine lettuce and uh, we'll have some let's see we'll have some broccoli I'm gonna go ahead and chop that up I have some broccoli blends here broccoli broccoli blend there's only one type of broccoli my words <laughs> and I have some carrots they're baby carrots but I'm gonna go ahead and chop them up you know as often as possible get organic it really is that important all right, so I have some carrots. We're adding some color. And one of my favorite things is like the baby bell pepper type of things. I don't know if they're really considered bell peppers, but they taste like them. Sweet peppers. I like the bite-sized ones, especially for snacks. I have lost over 100 pounds. And some of the things I did was not stopping eating. I would eat. Oh, let me tell you, I ate a lot. But I changed up what I ate. So I would eat carrots. I would eat baby baby uh, peppers, uh, sweet peppers. I would eat broccoli. I would dip them in dressings, healthier alternatives, okay? And then like from that point on, it's like the natural, I was just compelled to start eating healthier and healthier. And like the natural progression was absolutely amazing. Started to lose my weight 
And it wasn't that difficult because the true problem was me overeating the wrong foods. And it is very difficult to gain weight by eating tons of fruits and vegetables. Okay, it's very difficult. I don't care what anyone tells you. You would have to eat a lot. Um, her kids are lucky their mom makes some vegan food. Yes, they are. <laughs> I love Megan. Thank you, Tom. Um, but anyways, so I had this natural like tick in me to just eat and eat and eat when I was nervous, when I was sad, when I was happy, when I was all of the things, right? And by changing my variations of what I ate while I was nervous or whatever my emotional distress was, I was able to lose weight because really I needed therapy. I needed other things to take care of my past traumas that were creating this eating disorder in me, which was to just eat and eat and eat to basically suffice whatever that empty hole was inside me. I learn all these things throughout life, right? But okay, anyways, before I get too deep, <laughs> find this recipe and hundreds of others on our website. Yes, go visit the website, please. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put my rice right here. Oh, yummy, yummy, yummy. And some of the pieces need to be unmasked by the rice, like the butternut squash, so it can pop more on your dish. So like I said, it's about presentation. You have to make the effort to show off the pieces that are colorful because color is everything in presentation. I mean, you don't really look at a dish that's all browns and think that's a beautiful dish, right? <laughs> It's a wild rice blend, Tom. That's a great question. You can find wild rice blend pretty much anywhere. Um, I think I got mine at Target. All right. Okay, now to top my wild rice blend, because balsamic is already kind of sweeter and I did put some maple syrup, I like to add some pops of sweetness. So I have like uh, pecans, blueberries, and cranberries. And I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle those on my rice blend. Oh my gosh. Okay. And it's just a sprinkle. I don't overdo it with those. I don't blend it in. I don't really like them getting, she's eating the rainbow. Yes, I am, Tom. <laughs> um, okay. So now I have that blend in right there. I don't like to set it in with the rice because after a while things get soggy and I want that crunch and I want that burst of flavor um, inside of all of the other blended flavors. Okay. Now, let's see, we are going to go ahead and lay out our beautiful um, cauliflower. So let's see, go ahead and take a look at that before I do that part. You're just okay. joining us. We are live with Lunch Break Live. we got Coach Letha, who is making a brand new recipe. I don't think anybody's ever made this before in the six years we've had Lunch Break Live. This is a brand new recipe. Please share this out for your friends who want to know how to work with cauliflower and make a delicious cauliflower steak. Back to you, Coach. Thank you. Okay. Actually, I'm not trying to place too much because you want to know something. In order to make colors pop, you need a really beautiful background. And if you cover every single space within your dish, it kind of takes away from all of the colors. Unless you're making a Buddha bowl, then you want to just jam packed. <laughs> okay, so now the cauliflower. All right, and when I did put it in the oven, I had it at 450. I did five minutes on one side, and then the next six to eight minutes, I went ahead and flipped it over. Okay. And here we go. This is, I am telling you a hearty, hearty meal. This is absolutely delicious. So filling and people look at it and they're just like, what is that? <laughs> and you know what? They love it though. They absolutely love it. I've done this, um, meal, I think I, I think I did it for a lunch and it wasn't even anything really special. And I was like, wow, this can really just be done on such an amazing event. I'm thinking like I might do this for my kid's birthday. I don't know. Something's coming up and they're going to have all the little girls come over have a sleepover. I want to impress the little kids. And yes, kids love this. There's vegetables, but who cares? They love vegetables. Well, my kids do because <laughs> I make them vegetables all the time. Anyways, and this is a filling dish. Now, let's go, go ahead and talk about calorie count since I am a personal trainer and health coach. This is a little bit on the higher end of calories because of the rice. 
However, your body processes it so clean and so rapidly, you do not have to worry about bad calories in this particular dish. This is going to keep you full for a while, as our meals should, especially if we're active, okay? This is something I would eat as an athlete to absolutely keep my energy high. Um, now, if you're one of those people that likes to eat once a day, this is an excellent meal. You might even increase more volume as far as this goes. You might even want to use this as a bodybuilding option as well. Yes, there's protein in it. Yes, there's carbohydrates in it. And yes, there is fats in it, right? Because we put some of that oil in there. The food on its own isn't completely full of fat. However, we added the fat in by using the oils, okay? We want to make sure when we're using these delicate cooking oils, when we're sauteing, we're not keeping the Thank you, Elizabeth. Children learn. <laughs> exactly. I love this. Make sure you guys go ahead and read the comments and see what people are saying because the comments they have are out of this world and amazing. Okay. Yes, it's good for intermittent fasting. So basically, back to what I was saying as an athlete, this is something I would eat once a day because I really only get once a day to actually eat a hearty meal because I'm working throughout the day and I'm so active. And I would give myself a good hour to digest this food before I go right back into working out. When I say working out, I'm teaching, you know, classes all the time. I'm teaching dance fitness. I'm doing weightlifting. I'm running around with my kids. I have a very active lifestyle. So this is something I would recommend for someone with an active lifestyle, please. Hey, thanks. <laughs> Maybe the kids party. I love it. So that's right. That's what I was talking about. Rewind. This is something I think I'm going to make for my kids. Um, a birthday party because I want to give it like a good cafe, Paris bistro theme. And this is a great option for that. Anyways, do we have any more questions? I love to answer them. I oh. answer questions. Uh-huh. Wow, this has been such an exciting lunch break live. We're actually going to complete the show because I know you're such a busy mom and amazing coach out there and we can answer all the questions in the chat. Be sure to cool. put some more in there and we're going to find this recipe and thousands of others over there on Unchained TV. Go over to Instagram and follow Letha at Raw Energy Girl and you will find more amazing value. Thanks everybody for watching us on Lunch Break Live. <laughs> we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.